Hi, my name is Jim Dolly. I'm an emergency physician, but due to a strange twist of fate, I seem to know more about IRS Form 8606 than just about anybody else on the planet. That's partly because I started blogging for high-income professionals in 2011, and that was the year after Congress made a few changes in their rules that allowed people to do the backdoor Roth IRA. In this video, I'm going to talk about the backdoor Roth IRA, but in particular, we're going to go through Form 8606 so you can see how to fill it out properly. Prior to 2010, high earners could not deduct traditional IRA contributions if they had a retirement plan available to them at work. High earners were also not allowed to make direct Roth IRA contributions, and they were not allowed to convert traditional IRA money to Roth IRA money. However, in 2010, Congress changed one of those three rules. They decided that high earners could now convert traditional IRA money to Roth IRA money. They didn't change either of the other two rules, however, so high earners still couldn't contribute directly to a Roth IRA, and thus the backdoor or the indirect Roth IRA contribution was born. I've been doing this since 2010, along with lots of other high earners, and it's allowed me to have a sizable tax-free account, both for myself and for my wife, to spend in retirement. Here's how it works. Step one is to contribute to a traditional IRA. There's no deduction available due to your income because you're a high earner. Step two, however, which can be done the very next day, is to convert your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, and that's very easily done. Uh, on any website for your mutual fund company or your brokerage. And that's really it. You do have to beware of the pro rata rule. That means by the end of the year, you need to make sure you have zero dollars in any traditional IRA, SEP IRA, or simple IRA. If you have a small IRA, you should probably convert that to a Roth IRA and just pay the taxes on it. If you have a large IRA, however, that you don't really want to pay all that tax on, try to roll it into your employer's 401k or if you're self-employed, into an individual 401k. The final step, of course, is to make sure you fill out Form 8606 properly on your taxes. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can also do a backdoor Roth IRA each year for your spouse. The limit is 5,500 for each of you into a traditional IRA. Remember that limit is on contributions, not conversions. Once you hit 50, you get a $1,000 catch-up contribution for each of you to allow you to contribute $6,500 each year. A lot of people get confused and think they're comparing a tax-deferred IRA to a Roth IRA or a tax-free IRA. That's not really the case. What you're comparing it to is just investing money in a taxable account that's not asset protected or an account that's ta never taxed again and 100% asset protected in most states. And when that's the choice, it's really a no-brainer that you want to do the backdoor Roth IRA each year. Let's get into Form 8606. Here is Form 8606. As you can see, we're filling this out for Jim Bob Jones. We've put in Social Security number, we've put in the address, and now we're into the main part of the form. For Part 1, it says you have to fill this out if you made non-deductible contributions to a traditional IRA. Well, of course you did. That was the whole point of this backdoor Roth IRA. So, of course, you have to fill out Part 1. So, let's get into it. This is basically just an exercise in following the instructions. On step one, it says, enter your non-deductible contributions to traditional IRAs for 2017. Well, that's 5,500, so let's put that there. Step two, enter your total basis in traditional IRAs. Now, this is one that gets people confused all the time, and if you're confused, you can go to the instructions. They have easy to follow instructions, line by line, that you can also find on the internet. And for line two, it says, Generally, if this is the first year you are required to form 80, file at Form 8606, enter zero. And that's the case for almost everybody, unless you have some basis in your IRA. And what basis is, is money that you uh, have already paid taxes on. So if you made a non-deductible contribution to a traditional IRA at some point, then you would have some basis in it. But most people who are just starting the backdoor Roth IRA process don't have any basis, and so that line is zero. Add the two lines together, and that's 5,500. Next question asked, in 2017, did you take a distribution or make a Roth IRA conversion? Well, the second part of the backdoor Roth IRA is a Roth IRA conversion, so that answer is yes. So you go to line four. 
Enter those contributions, including on line one that were made from January 1st, 2018 to April 17th, 2018. Now that's generally a mistake to make those contributions after the end of the calendar year, even though it is allowed. It just makes this form a little bit more complicated. So if you made your contribution before the end of the calendar year, that line is zero. Subtract line four from line three, that's 5,500. Now here is where the pro rata rule kicks in on line six. Enter the value of all your traditional SEP and simple IRAs as of December 31st, 2017. You want that to be zero. And you make that zero by either converting those before the end of the calendar year to a Roth IRA or rolling them into a 401k. Next question, enter your distributions from traditional SEP and simple IRAs. Don't include conversions to a Roth IRA. So that's going to be zero. Enter the net amount you converted from traditional SEP and simple IRAs to Roth IRAs in 2017. So if you're doing the backdoor Roth IRA process, you converted 5,500 to a Roth IRA. Now add line six, seven, and eight. That's 5,500. Divide line five by line nine, and that equals one. 5,500 divided by 5,500. Multiply line eight by line 10, and that's again 5,500. Multiply line seven by line 10. Seven times one is, or zero times one is zero. Line 13, add lines 11 and 12. That's 5,500. Subtract line 13 from line 3, so 5,500 minus 5,500 is 0. Subtract line 12 from line 7, again that's 0. None of your uh, amount was attributable to qualified disaster distributions most likely, so that's going to be 0. And your taxable amount comes from subtracting this from this, so 0 minus 0 is 0. And this is a very important line on Form 8606. This is the amount of taxable income you've generated by doing uh, this Roth stuff. So as you can see, this now goes to IRS Form 1040 on line 15B, the taxable amount of IRA distributions, and that's a zero. So you're not going to owe any tax on that. Now if we go back to Form 8606 and go on to the next section, it says complete this part if you converted part or all of your traditional SEP or simple IRAs to a Roth IRA in 2017. You did that because the second part of a backdoor Roth IRA is the conversion step. So if you had completed part one, enter the amount from line eight, that is 5,500. The next line, if you completed part one, enter the amount from line 11, that again is 5,500. The taxable amount you get by subtracting line 17 from line 16, that's zero. Again, this is an important line. You want this to be zero and you want it to then go to IRS Form 1040 on line 15B, the taxable amount of IRA distributions. So you've now filled out uh, Form 8606 properly. Now if you are in retirement or you took some distributions from a Roth IRA, you may have to fill out this section, but most of the time you do not. You just sign it and date it and that's it. You'll have to fill it again for your spouse, because remember, an IRA stands for Individual Retirement Arrangements. So you have to do one of these for each of the spouses. So there's a lot of ways to screw this up, even though it seems very straightforward. The first way is trickling in your contributions. Okay, If you make enough money that you have to do your Roth IRA contribution indirectly via the back door, you make enough money that you can put 5,500 in all at once. So don't put in 300 bucks a month for the whole year. It'll just make things more complicated to keep track of. Put in your 5,500 all at once. The second issue people run into is not making the contribution during the calendar year. Remember with an IRA, you're allowed to contribute up until tax day of the next year. But if you do that, it makes your form 8606 a little more complicated. Let's walk through what that looks like if you have made that bad decision. Okay, obviously the top stays the same. Enter your non-deductible contributions, including those made after the first of the year. So that's still 5,500. Enter your total basis. Again, that's still zero. Add lines one and two. That's again 5,500. Did you take a distribution or make a Roth conversion? Well, you didn't because you didn't make the contribution before the end of the year. You couldn't have done a conversion before the end of the calendar year. And so 
you enter the amount from line 3 on line 14 and skip the rest of part 1. So you go here to line 14, 5500. Exactly what line 3 says, right? You take from line 3, enter the amount from line 3 on line 14, do not complete the rest of part 1. Okay? So the rest of that all stays as 0. And basically, this gets carried forward to the next year's form as basis. When you go to part two, you didn't do any conversions, so you don't fill out part two. You didn't do any distributions, so you don't fill out part three. You sign and date it. However, next year it's going to be a little bit more complicated, okay? Because you will have made, you may realize the error of your ways, and now you're going to do the contribution and the conversion during the calendar year. However, you basically, in the next year, have converted two contributions. You've converted 11,000 not just the 5,500 you contributed for that year. So you still got 5,500 on the first year. You've now got basis, though, because you carried that over from the prior year. So this, on line three, this total becomes 11,000. And because you now made a conversion, you got to do lines four through line 13. So line four, enter those contributions included on line one that were made from January 1st, 2018 through April 17th, 2018. And that's not going to be any because you made those after the first, uh, you made those in the for the prior year. So that's still zero. Subtract line four from line three, that gives you 11,000. Over here, you had basis. Your basis was 5,500, as you'll recall. Oh no, your basis, I'm sorry, your basis is zero because you didn't have any money in there on December 31st of the prior year because you put it in after that date. Enter your distributions. You didn't have any distributions. You don't have to count conversions there. Enter the net amount you converted. Well, this is now going to be 11,000. Add lines 6, 7, and 8. That totals up to 11,000. Divide line 5 by line 9, that's again 1. Multiply line 8 by line 10, that's going to be 11,000. Line 12 is still going to be 0. Line 13 is going to be 11,000. Scroll that up. You'll see subtract line 13 from line 3. 3 is 11,000, 13 is 11,000. So again, this is 0. So the track line 12 from line 7, that's again 0. There's no disaster contributions, that's again 0. The taxable amount, of course, is still 0. You haven't done anything that's taxable. Now, this year you actually made a conversion. If you completed part 1, enter the amount from line 8, that's 11,000. If you completed part 1, enter the amount from 11, that's 11,000. So again, 11,000 minus 11,000 is still 0. So you won't owe any money by doing that. You just made your paperwork a little bit more complicated. Another mistake that can be made is not doing the conversion during the calendar year. I mean, technically, there's no time limit on the conversion. The contribution you have to make by tax day for that calendar year. But the conversion uh, can be done any time. So if you want to drag out the conversion, that can cause you all kinds of problems. Not only does it make your 8606 more complicated, but your money has probably earned some money in the meantime. And so it's not going to be nice round numbers like 5,500. So do yourself a favor. Do the conversion the day after you make the contribution so you don't have any significant gain between the two. Another mistake people make is not knowing the pro rata rule. As I discussed, on line 6, you want that to be zero. If you don't zero out that traditional IRA, that SEP IRA, that simple IRA by the end of the year, that's going to screw, screw this up because that amount is not going to be zero. And this amount here is not going to be a nice clean one. So try not to do that. It will screw you up. Um, zero those things out by the end of the year. Sometimes people choose the wrong way to deal with the tax deferred IRA. If you have a little tiny IRA, just convert it. You'll have to pay a little bit in taxes, but it'll be much simpler than to do a rollover. If you have a large IRA and you don't want to pay the taxes on it, then roll that into your 401k. If you're self-employed, open an individual 401k and roll it in there. Another mistake people make is they open their individual 401k at the wrong place. Vanguard, for instance, doesn't allow 
IRA rollovers into its individual 401k. So if you need to roll over an IRA into an individual 401k, don't open it at Vanguard. Open it at Fidelity or E-Trade that allow that feature. Another mistake people make is not doing an 8606. You actually do have to fill out this form each year if you're making non-deductible IRA contributions. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and amend your tax returns for the last few years. But this is something you want to do because if you're not doing it, you're going to end up paying taxes on that 5500 twice. Sometimes people that are self-employed use a SEP IRA instead of a 401k. But that's a mistake because that SEP IRA total gets counted on line 6 of form 8606 and is going to trigger the pro rata rule, which is going to make uh, your life a big mess. And basically, part of your non-deductible contribution is not going to be converted when you do that conversion of $5,500 each year. And there's going to be some tax due. So be sure not to use a SEP IRA. Use an individual 401k instead. Some people used to worry a lot about the STEP doctrine, which basically says you can't do a backdoor Roth IRA because you can't do a direct Roth IRA contribution. Even though nobody was ever prosecuted on this, people worried about it. Well, in 2018, Congress and the IRS has come out with clarification that basically say the backdoor Roth IRA is fine. We know about it. We know people are doing it. You go ahead and do it. You don't have to wait between the contribution and conversion step. So quit worrying about the step doctrine. Sometimes people confuse a backdoor Roth IRA with a Roth conversion. Now, it's true that the backdoor Roth IRA process has a conversion step in it, but a typical Roth conversion has a tax cost. You're moving money that is pre-tax into a post-tax account. And when you do that, you have to pay taxes on it. But with a backdoor Roth IRA, there is no tax due. You are not having to pay taxes because you already paid taxes on the money you put into the IRA and you didn't get a deduction for that. Likewise, some people confuse a backdoor Roth IRA with a Roth 401k. And sometimes it's a difficult decision trying to decide whether to use the tax deferred part of your 401k or the Roth part of a 401k. With a backdoor Roth IRA, there's no difficult decision. And that's because there, you can't take a tax deduction for an IRA contribution as a high earner with access to any sort of other retirement account. And so it's really a no-brainer to do the backdoor Roth IRA each year. It's not something you have to debate like a Roth 401k contribution might be. Another mistake people make is forgetting that the I in IRA stands for individual. It means individual retirement arrangement. That means you have to fill out an 8606 for both of you. But if for some reason somebody can't do a backdoor Roth IRA because they couldn't get rid of a big SEP IRA or something for some reason, the spouse can still do one each year. Another mistake people make is not understanding what basis is. Basis is money that you've already paid taxes on. So don't uh, put anything on line two in most situations because you didn't carry anything over from the prior year that you've already paid tax on. So that's going to be zero each year. Sometimes people make the mistake of skipping lines 4 through 13 on Form 8606. As you can see, if you've made a Roth IRA conversion, you don't get to skip those lines. You have to fill them out. Remember as you do line 10 that 1 divided by 1 is 1, not 0. Okay, This is a mistake a lot of people make. Uh, also, if you're dividing 0 by 0, that's also 1. Um, and so be sure to fill that out correctly. In general, line 10 should be 1 on Form 8606. Another mistake people make is worrying about pennies. For example, if you leave that money in your traditional IRA for a few days in a money market fund or something before converting it to a Roth IRA, there might be a few pennies in there, maybe even a few dollars in that account. When you do the conversion step, just convert it all. Even if you have to pay tax on a couple of bucks, it's no big deal. Um, but in general, if it's just a few pennies, you round down on your taxes anyway, and you're not going to have to pay any extra tax for that money. Certainly don't stress out about it. Even if you leave it in the traditional IRA until next year and convert it then, it's not a big deal. And the biggest mistake people make is just not checking your work or that of your tax preparer. Remember that line 15C and line 18 on your form 8606 needs to be zero or you're going to get a tax bill for the backdoor Roth IRA process. Thank you very much. I hope that video was helpful to you in filling out your own 8606. For more information, come by whitecoatinvestor.com. I've got uh, some tutorials there that can help you fill out your 8606 properly. You can always shoot me an email at editor at whitecoatinvestor.com. Thanks for what you do, and thanks for watching this video.